Do you like hot cocoa? Do you like stuffing it like marshmallows or candy cane or uh, whipped cream? Well, I think our hot cocoa will go along with our project today. Let's get started. Hey everyone, Kristen saw I'm here enjoying a cup of hot cocoa. So tell me, how do you like your hot cocoa? It's not coffee. Don't worry, you don't want to see me on coffee, but it's pretty yummy stuff. So today we are going to work on the cocoa stand in our candy cane lane bench pillow. So this one is so cute. Oh my gosh. And we get to use some fun products with it, but let's start with the basics. So, um, someone told me yesterday that they, um, ordered the fabric kit and they were surprised it didn't have the CD in it. And the fabric kit is just the fabric kit. So I just want to point out again, fabric kit, these are the items that you want. Fabric kit, you need the machine embroidery CD. It just has the CD in it. And on that CD is the PDF of instructions and all the design files that we need. Separate item. And then the embellishment kit. Don't forget your embellishment kit that will have a lot of the items that we're gonna to use today and the fairy lights. And then the thread kit. I love this thread kit. I know that um, a lot of you have purchased the thread kit just recently and are waiting for it to arrive and from our sponsor and she's shipping them out um, as soon as she can. So super cute thread kit makes it easy to not have to wonder uh, what threads to use. So, and then for your stabilizer, I am using the Kimberbell Light Mesh Cutaway. It's the one with the gold on it. Um, and this is what I'm putting all of my uh, designs in the hoop. So this is the hooped stabilizer. And then the Kim Kimberbell Feasible Backing, the green one, um, that is on the back of every single fabric. And there's been a lot of chatter about um, the stabilizer and how to do it. So just real quick, I do not um, stabilize my entire piece of fabric that comes. What I do is I cut out my um, fabric piece that I need for that day and then I lay it on top of the feasible stabilizer and cut that as well. You can do it however you want. You can definitely, um, the full piece of fabric that you get, you can put this on the back and then cut. That works totally fine. Um, but you do have some leftover fabrics. And so I figure, um, why not, uh, not waste it? <laughs> That's my, what works for me. So you do what works for you. All right. So, um, I do, like I said, I back the, the main fabric, the background fabric, and every single applique piece. And you see that it wards off puckers, it makes it so that everything comes out so nice, so that works well for me. Um, and somebody was asking me um, about how to get to the links. In the video description underneath this video, directly under the video, you just scroll down beyond the video and there's a little bit of information and then it says um, see more and you click on that and there's all the information. So Anyway, so click on one of the videos. And so for the Candy Cane Lane video, you can see right here. So here's the video. The video is playing right now. It's telling us what to do on how to make Candy Cane Lane. And then if you scroll down underneath the video, I'm on a computer, but I assume it's pretty similar on a phone. So you can see right here, it says Kristen creates, and then there's some information. Join in the fun in our group project, blah, blah, blah. And then you click show more and look at all of this information is here. And if you're on a mobile phone, the video description is right under the video. Next to the title of the video, I've drawn a circle around the drop arrow. Click that and all the links and information you're looking for is right at your fingertips. I hope this helps. So there's links to this, links to our, um, our sponsor, links to the needles that I prefer. Um, and our future projects. So the things that we're working on next, there's links in there about that too, so that you can start getting ready for future projects. 
So look in the video description. Everything that you could ask for is there. Um, I will also try and add information about the shirts that I wear because I get a lot of questions about that. Um, yesterday was that the Candy Cane Lane shirt by Designs by Juju. I will make sure and add a link to the video description. Um, I think this one... I don't remember, applique something or other. And um, I'm trying to wear all my Christmas shirts for you. <laughs> so I will add information in um, the video description to try and beat you to all the questions. <laughs> all right, so today let's talk about the Coco Stand. Oh my gosh, it is so cute. So the Coco Stand today, we are gonna start with our background fabric. And like I mentioned yesterday, this is the light gray with white dots and it's, light enough that you can't totally tell which is the front or the back so just make sure and check carefully before you add your feasible stabilizer because you want to have it on uh, the back of your fabric so that that you've got the gray light gray with white dots on it and this is just great so this one the size is going we're going to start with the size at eight and a half by ten and a half for this eight and a half by ten and a half and as always back it with fusible stabilizer i'm using the kimberbell backing and it's working great so that's for our main fabric and then some applique pieces so we are going to use our red glitter again from our embellishment kit you want to make sure to take off the topping the sticky topping um, I decided not to cut this one today because um, I made a mistake yesterday and needed to use extra and I want to make sure to have enough so but you're going to start with a piece of red glitter that is where is it uh one and a half by two and a half so just a small little piece one and a half by two and a half for your red glitter today and then the cork oh i love this this is so cute i made a purse with cork and it was pretty cute so um on your cork piece it's in your embellishment kit and the cork we're going to use a piece that is four by two so you can see we've got a generous size and we just need a size that is four by two and it's in your embellishment kit and you do not want to back this with fusible stabilizer you don't want to back it with anything same with your glitter sheet do not back these they're already ready to go all right and then one little fabric applique piece and it is the brown with lines all over it and that one we are going to cut to three and a half by three three and a half by three and as always back it with fusible stabilizer all right, so those are the products that we're gonna need our supplies for the cocoa stand. And then we also need batting because we are quilting in the hoop. How did it go yesterday? Let me know how it went yesterday when you did the first block. Um, and make sure and share a photo in the comments of that post because what I'm doing is I'm stealing those photos and I'm putting them on the future tutorials so that it's a group project, right? I wanna see everybody's um, project. So, add a picture of your block to the comments and you'll see it on a future tutorial so anyway we need our batting today because we are quilting in the hoop and there's a full tutorial on the very first um on how the very first tutorial always has a much more detailed how to do it and so watch that one if you haven't started yet um so on our batting today you always go by the final cut size. So for this cocoa stand, the final cut size of this project is six and a half by eight and a half. So that means we want a piece of batting that is seven by nine. I always do it a half inch larger, at least a half inch larger. It can be um, any size really, because you're gonna trim it down in the hoop, but you want it at least a half inch larger so that it tacks down and then we'll, we will trim it. So seven by nine for your batting. And then let's talk about um, a couple of things. So um, like, like we did yesterday, these blocks are all gonna be a quarter inch up from the bottom of our fabric. And so I'm using, you saw yesterday, I'm using the basting stitch for, cause we've already got the basting stitch since we're pre-quilting. So you use a tape measure or whatever and go up a quarter inch from there, draw a line with a uh, disappearing ink pen or just feel for your batting. It, it basically lands at the bottom of your batting. And we went over all of that yesterday, so make sure to watch the first tutorial. So one quarter inch up from the bottom, all of them, so that none of our blocks are floating. 
And then let's talk about our quilting. So yesterday we used the Candy Cane Lane quilting. And as I mentioned, you can use any quilting design that you want. I'm gonna mix it up. I've gone over what I wanna do and I'm gonna mix it up, keep you on your toes a little bit. You can use the Candy Cane Lane bundle for everything. You can use, it's the candy canes and the peppermint all mixed together and it's such a cute one. And you can do that on every single block for the back of your, your uh, pillow. That's totally up to you. For my Twilight Boulevard last year, I did a different one on every block and I like the look of that. And so that's what I'm gonna do on this one as well. I'm gonna use a lot of the candy cane one, um, but I'm going to break it up a little bit. So for today, for the cocoa stand, I've decided on Christmas four, it's the Christmas lights quilting design. And I just thought there's so many lights on this one block on the cocoa stand. It's so cute that I thought the Christmas lights one will be really cute. So I'm gonna use that, use whatever quilting design you want, but you wanna make sure to use a size of, of your quilting design, let's see, since our final cut size is six and a half by eight and a half, that means we want a quilting design that is six by eight. Make sure to use any quilting design you want that's six by eight. If you bought the Candy Cane Lane bundle, you can use that on all of the blocks or you can separate it and, and make it a little bit um, fun in my opinion and have different ones. So for today, I am gonna use the Christmas four. So when you buy your quilting designs from Kimberbell.com, please use your affiliate link. And there's a link in the video description underneath this video. And that affiliate link will take you to the Kimberbell website, but it also gives a little credit to our sponsor for doing all this work. <laughs> they have ordered and reordered and getting so many um, supplies for us and keeping on top of the supplies because most of us ordered back at the end of August when we first got our sponsor but a lot of people are finding Kristen Creates more recently and they just ordered and so she just keeps ordering more and more and she's doing such a great job at answering all the questions shipping all the supplies so whatever we can do to support our sponsor is just a nice thing because they're they're definitely working hard for us so use that affiliate link please to order your uh, quilting designs from Kimberbell. And like I said, we're gonna go up a quarter inch from the bottom. Everything else is pretty, um, pretty standard, but we will go over every single step. Don't worry, every step of the process will be in this tutorial. So don't forget, share your photos in the Christian Creates group. I wanna see them. Thank you. And don't forget, you need some cocoa while you're working on this today. <laughs> Hey everyone, so I wanted to show you for today's block, if you're using a six by 10 hoop, then we need to show you how to make it fit in a six by 10 hoop. So since we need a quilting design that is six by eight, if your largest hoop is a six by 10 hoop, then it's not gonna fit. The six by eight design does not fit in a six by 10 hoop. And I know that seems odd, but I'll show you why. So I'm just gonna show you using embroidery software so that you can visualize what needs to be done. I'm using Sew Up Pro embroidery software. I'm sure that whatever software you use, it, the steps should be very similar. So you can see the title bar up here, Sew Up Pro, and then go to File Open and open up the quilting design that you're gonna use. So I just bought this one just now on the Kimberbell website using our affiliate link. Try to use our affiliate link whenever possible to help our sponsor. So um, we are gonna open up a six by eight and I'm using Christmas four, it's the lights and open up your six by eight quilting design. All right, so as you can see, it automatically opens up to a five by seven hoop. So we need to change that. I'm gonna change it to a six by 10 hoop, even though it doesn't fit in a six by 10, just so you can see how to do this. So up here at this little hoop button, you click on adjust hoop and go to six by 10. All right, it'll give a pop-up in a minute telling us it doesn't fit, help, what do I do? <laughs> but we're gonna tell it to calm down and we'll fix it in a minute. So um, there was one other thing I wanted to tell you. Oh, so if you have a machine that lets you bypass a step, great. I don't believe that my dream machine lets me do that. So I'm doing it on embroidery software. 
And so I wanna quickly go through the steps. So step one is the placement stitch for our batting. And we do that right on our stabilizer and then you would put your batting down. And then step two is the tack down of our batting so that we would tack that down and then we would trim it. And then number three is also on our stabilizer and that one is the placement stitch for our main fabric. And you can see that it goes outside of the hoop area here. So, and then step four is the tack down or basting stitch of that main fabric. And again, it's too large. So, and step five is the quilting design. So if I click somewhere outside, you can see, so there's our pop-up telling us it doesn't fit. Do we want to change hoops? We're going to say no, because we're going to fix it. So as you can see up here on the right, it tells us that the design, the six by eight design is actually six and a half by eight and a half. And that I just showed you the reasoning for that is steps three and four, that placement and tack down of our main fabric. So that makes it not fit in a six by 10 hoop. So easy solution. We're going to take out steps three and four so that it will fit in a six by 10 hoop. If you have a seven by 12 hoop or eight by 12 or nine by 14, you can do this. No problem. You don't have to take any steps out. But if your largest hoop is a six by 10, don't let it stop you from doing the quilting because it's very easy to take out these steps. And so what pro has a free trial that you can use um, to take out these steps. I think it was from SNS Computing. I think it was like $60. I bought it a few years ago, but it's really embroidered, it, really easy software to use. And it, you do need to take out these steps if your largest hoop is six by 10. So to do that, we know that we need to take out steps three and four. So just click on it and then right click and click delete thread. And then again, this one right click, delete thread. So now we have step one, the uh, placement stitch for our batting. Step two is the tack down of our batting. And number three is our actual quilting design. And now it fits. You can see now we're at six by eight. So this will fit in your six by 10 hoop. And that was an easy fix. So there's one last step and it's really important. Make sure to do a file save as, always save as. If you just did save, then you're saving over your original file and someday you might get a larger hoop and then you won't have this file. And having that, the placement and the, especially the tack down or basting stitch, it's a nice to have. It helps to ward off puckers. It helps to keep everything lined up. Your fabric won't move. Um, but if it keeps you from doing this project, then you can easily get rid of it. And all you do, would do instead is put your fabric down on your batting and tape it in place. Easy to do. Um, so like I said, the having steps three and four is a nice to have, but don't let it keep you from doing this block. So file, save as, and then you just change the name. So I would just click after the original writing and say, um, no steps three and four, whatever you want to name it. You could just say adjusted. You could say, Kristen told me to do this. <laughs> it doesn't matter at all, but make sure to save as always do a save as. All right. And then you'll have it for any other time. So in fact, there are other blocks that we will need this, um, for the candy cane lane, candy cane lane, not candy corn, candy cane lane that we are working on, you will need this again. So if you are using the uh, Christmas two, I think it was that we used yesterday, same thing. The process obviously is all the same and you would save it and then you can use it on all your blocks. I'm changing mine up. I've decided I'm going to do different quilting designs on each block. And I think that's fun. But again, do a save as and you'll be all set for next time.
Oh boy, that's even cuter than I expected it to be. Look at how cute these little Christmas lights. Okay, everyone, now that we have the quilting done, I chose these super cute Christmas lights, Christmas four. Oh, I love that. All right, so next we are going to load our embroidery design. It is the um, cocoa stand for today. And don't forget that we need to move our design down. So, we, I'm just gonna I did a very good tutorial yesterday on how to do that but I am going to do a quickie today um, so I am using this button here to determine where the bottom of the design is so this little green crosshair in the center there that shows the center of the whole design and we want to know where the bottom of the design is so we press this bottom button on these buttons over here and then the green crosshair now is down here at the bottom and you see that it moved our hoop down to the bottom to show where the design is so if we put our foot down then we can see that it's going to stitch the very bottom of the design up here and we don't want it there we want it down here so that it looks like it's not floating so this is our basting stitch and we want to stitch the bottom of the design one quarter inch up so as I showed in yesterday's tutorial you can use a tape measure and measure a quarter inch and uh, make a little mark there with uh, water what is it disappearing ink pen or you can just feel i mean it's pretty easy you can feel the batting you want the design the bottom of the design to be at the bottom of the batting here and i can feel it and it's right where that that line is that i made with the water soluble pen all right and so since we are too high up like i said we're up here and we want to bring bring it down here so you always start by going to that button that had the dotted line and then to these buttons to bring the to show where the bottom of the design is that's where you start and then we go up to edit and we're going to move the design so see this button here in the edit screen, go to move, and we are just going to use these, oops, sorry, I'm just trying to see around the phone. So we are going to use these buttons to move the design actually down. And I'm going to show you here. So when I hit that bottom button, it's actually moving the design down. And you can see it on the screen here as well. When I hit this button, it's bringing the design down. All right, so I'm hitting this bottom button. This is in the edit move category of your machine. All right, and we're still too high, so I'm gonna keep hitting that button. So again, I was using this button, the bottom button, to move the design down. I'm using the edit screen and then the move category, all right? So when I go out of this now, I've already moved it down. So it was edit, move, and when I go out of that screen, then I get this button back. This is that one that shows all around the design. So I'm going to hit that again, and I'm going to go to the middle, and all that's doing is moving the hoop so that I can see where the middle of the design is, where the top of the design is, left, right. So I'm not moving the design here, I'm just moving the hoop so that I can see where it's going to stitch for the bottom of the design. And you can see that we're right over that mark that I made, so we're all good. 
So I'm going to go back to the center. So again, this is just on the regular screen. Um, before you start embroidering, you get this button that shows you um, where everything is going to be on the um, on the hoop. But then to actually edit move, you would go up here to edit and then to move. And then the buttons are different. It's these buttons now and those actually move the design. So I just hit those bottom buttons got the design down and now we're all good and then you just exit out say okay and we're ready to start so don't forget that we don't need this placement stitch and we don't need the next one which is the basting box we don't need either of those so we're going to bypass those and to do that like I showed yesterday it's this button here the plus and minus and then this one to go down to the next thread color is what it's asking us. And then, then we have that basting box and we don't need that either because we quilted. So we're going to go down one more and then we're at the part that we need to start. So easy peasy and just giving you a visual of how to do it. And like I said, you want your design to the bottom of your design to be at the bottom of your batting and which is a quarter inch up from the basting stitch. All right, let's do it. 